thank you so much for this uh, introduction. I thank Ashraf al Tayar and Walid al Habashi and uh, Esham, of course, for speaking of a critical ultrasound when centered on the lung. It makes a holistic discipline. We will see that through the example of the blue protocol. I hope you hear me well. The slides are going fine. So the travel is a virtual today. It's a pity, but my honor is the same. I have still no conflict of interest more than three decades after the first coup de foudre with ultrasound. So it was a long story. It began in 1983. There were underground years. And then we succeeded to publish the concept of whole body critical ultrasound in the critically ill in 1991, where the lung was, let's say, uh, one part. Of course, maybe the cherry on the cake, but only one part. And I am always very honored to speak about lung ultrasound. So we will try to be as short as we must. Uh, among the seven principles of lung ultrasound in the critically ill, we emphasize only on the first one with a simple equipment we are at the best place for making simple and efficient lung ultrasound. We will make a reminder of the 10 basic signs, but this reminder will also be useful for the experts. So I ask all to pay attention. So we are no longer at the cardiac era, but the lung area for changing. This is the pleural line that is surrounded by the ribs. This makes, we called it the bad sign. And uh, the pleural line indicates clearly the parietal pleura without any confusion. Just take a look to the image quality and you will see later. From the pleural line, you can have a repetition of this pleural line that we called the A line which indicates that there is air below the pleural line. That is below the parietal pleura. This air can be dead or alive. Let us see the third sign that we see in the Merlin space. That is this uh, green uh, mark. We see a dynamic, which means that the lung is moving. Look well. This movement is homogeneous, but comes from the very pleural line, not one millimeter above or below. Lung sliding is a gold standard. It indicates that the air below the parietal pleura is alveolar air, which means that the visceral pleura is also in the pleural line. This is lung sliding when C is through a mode, you can see what you see in real time. That is here, the seashore sign, clearly indicating, objectifying lung sliding. Rapidly, uh, we present the surf definition of the plural effusion. We don't look at the color of the effusion because only anechoic collections are anechoic. So instead of this definition, we'll present the lung line that makes, so I show it here, this is the lung line, that makes with the pleural line that is clearly a bit above, the quad sign, which is a universal sign of pleural effusion, and you have a bedside gold standard. The diagnosis of lung consolidation. Here is a partial one. It makes, it is a subpleural consolidation, and it makes the shred or fractal sign because the boundary with the underlying aerated lung is shredded fractal. Once again, we have a bedside gold standard. 
here is a translobar lung consolidation. Note that it is also subplural. So I think that this word is maybe useless. Here, the lung appears for once like an anatomic lung, and we called this sign the lung sign of whole translobar consolidation. This is again a gold standard. The B line and the relation with the lung rockets. The B line is the elementary sign of interstitial syndrome. It has seven criteria, three are constant. It is always a commit tail artifact. It always arises from the pleural line. It always moves with lung sliding when we have lung sliding. In the critically ill, it is not obvious to have lung sliding. So we have four other criteria which are almost always present. Thanks to the word almost, we have a universal definition showing that it is almost always long that is without fading, almost always well-defined like a laser, almost always erasing the A lines that should be located at this very spaces, almost always hyperechoic. More than two B lines, and I specify between two ribs in a rib short axis view, are called lung rockets. And now the definition of interstitial syndrome is very simple. Lung rockets indicate interstitial syndrome, period. For pneumothorax, we can see first an uh, image. There is the video. You can see but nothing is moving at the pleural line and above and below. And the comments are in the next slide. We can see in this video that there is abolition of lung sliding at the anterior chest wall in a supine or semi-recumbent patient. It generates on M mode the stratosphere sign. Please, not the barcode sign. Thank you. And we see the stratosphere sign. And we see a repetition of the pleural line that is the A line. The anterior location of abolished lung sliding with A lines makes the A prime profile in the blue protocol. It is fully sensitive, not specific. For making the diagnosis of pneumothorax, we need to have the lung point. The lung point is defined as the very point where an A prime profile is suddenly replaced by any other profile, here a lung. And this is the definition. We can make no mistake by using exactly this simple definition. Not fully sensitive that was expected, but fully specific. This is a patient with a pneumothorax. Time is running. We have to speak of now the blue protocol. This is in the title. And the blue protocol is basically a fast protocol devoted to the acute respiratory failure. It considers the lung first because the lung is the suffering organ. It considers the veins because when you suspect embolism, you will go straight away to the venous system in a protocol that is not yet published, unfortunately. And listen well, it considers the heart just for sharing the fact that the heart approach can be deeply 
simplified to the point in the blue protocol not to be included. Look at the decision tree. We see lung items and venous items for highlighting the most frequent lung causes of respiratory failure, lung and cardiac causes, by the way, and there is no cardiac item. And we will see, because the lecture is rather short, a few examples of use in an acute respiratory failure. You have two diagnoses which are often competing, especially when the pneumonia gets IRDS, the diagnosis between hemodynamic pulmonary edema and pneumonia and or IRDS will be simple. Here we can see in the slide, which is uh, the video, that this patient has anteriorly, every word is important, this patient has a lung sliding, we see the Merlin space and we can see several, more than two, B lines at the four anterior points, the blue points. This patient has the likely diagnosis of hemodynamic pulmonary edema and likely is 97% sensitivity, 95% specificity with only a lung approach. The diagnosis of left heart failure. In this slide, we can see the C profile. The previous one was called the B profile. I said it, I think. In the C profile, which is not present in all the pneumonia, we have a sign that is quite completely specific to pneumonia ARDS because we see a lung consolidation. If I see a lung consolidation at the anterior chest wall, this is the C profile. This is completely likely pneumonia and or ARDS. There are questions. Of course, many questions. Are three minutes really possible? How about rare or double diagnosis or no diagnosis? All this is written in our latest uh, textbook and the time is a bit running. Uh, how do you do uh, when you have suspicion of embolism and no DVT? Can you do the blue protocol with a traditional laptop machine or with a traditional probe? But one question is why is the heart not included? And why are we here with the lung in this session? We speak of the scientific reason, time permitting. The heart does not feature in the blue protocol because we scan the suffering organ, the lung. Of course, once we have the probe in the hand, we will look at the heart. But after the blue protocol, and may I be a bit provocative, once the patient has been relieved through the therapy given after the blue protocol and the echocardiography will be simpler in a relieved patient. We will say it differently. This patient has a respiratory failure and you will see how holistic is this example. This profile will inform about the left ventricle systolic and even diastolic function and the coaptation of the left valves. What do we see? With lung sliding, A lines, this is the A profile, no B line, that is no lung rockets, that is no interstitial syndrome, that is no pulmonary edema. That means no hemodynamic pulmonary edema, that is the left heart is not the cause of the dyspnea. Holistic ultrasound. 
the false protocol will be dealt with uh, tomorrow and it will deal with the question of giving of not giving fluids that is another approach that can be combined with those that we have seen uh, this morning so we spare time we will not speak also of the sesame protocol which is the protocol for making the cause of a cardiac arrest during the cardiac arrest where briefly we begin by the lung pneumothorax and then we search for embolism with an indirect sign at the venous area and then in the abdomen and before looking at the heart we look around the heart which is not exactly echocardio that comes in position number five in cardiac arrest sesame protocol but it matters to insist again on the B profile for one simple reason when I read the literature it seems that the B profile has not been perfectly understood and maybe it's our fault we need to repeat and repeat clearly what is the B profile because if I have only a few years to live I will even not mention the other profiles there are eight all in all I will insist on the B profile which is maybe the most contributive let us remind it begins with the B line there is no need for intelligent artificial intelligence for recognizing a B line when you have a simple and suitable machine the simplest are the best so here is the beeline with the seven criteria that we have seen. This beeline must be multiple, more than two, that is lung rockets. These lung rockets must be disseminated harmoniously, symmetrically at the anterior chest wall and mandatorily they must be associated with lung sliding. So we have lung rockets anterior with lung sliding. And here we can say this patient has the B profile. And here only we can say sensitivity 97, specificity 95. We looked only at the lung for the diagnosis of acute hemodynamic pulmonary edema. Now let us look one more impact of the blue protocol. So consider we are anteriorly in a critically ill patient with this probe that you can see, which is to our opinion, the universal probe that makes the work of all the other probes in the critical care aspect and a simple equipment, uh, no need for Doppler, uh, no need for uh, artificial intelligence, uh, etc. Look, these two patients, they have lung rockets, left and right at the anterior wall. To the left, I see lung sliding. This patient has the B profile. To the right, I see abolition of lung sliding. We called it the B prime profile. To the left, this is the pattern of hemodynamic pulmonary edema. To the right, the pattern of pneumonia and or ARDS. I leave it a bit. So you can see at the beginning of the blue protocol, when you are still at the anterior chest wall, the lung sliding allows to go to the left or to the right, present or abolished, B profile, or if abolished, B prime profile, when you have the lung rockets indicating two diametrally opposed diagnoses and therapies.
blue protocol or not, pandemic or not, we should beware of the microbes. And this is why we use since uh, three decades and more, we did not need to wait the laptop uh, revolution to have a narrow machine, which is compact with a flat keyboard that you can clean in a few seconds. This probe is the universal probe. It's a micro convex probe as they use for a transfontanellar approach in the babies. Perfect ergonomy and perfect range between superficie and depth to see the whole brain of the babies. This is the probe that we use for the whole body. And we have written a protocol for simple, fast, efficient cleaning. We did not know there would be this uh, pandemic today. Warning now. Uh, this paper indicates that log ultrasound is easy, but not completely easy. And we have several simple points which need to be mastered. Sequentially, that is each one is simple, accessible, but there are many. And we propose at SURF to avoid to complicate lung ultrasound. And we try to clean all the points that are wrong, illogical, confusing, uselessly complicated, like a subpleural consolidation, and even inesthetical. This is the wiki side of a lung ultrasound. We will see, time permitting, how we can be academic and pragmatic. Here you have a pseudo pitfall in lung ultrasound. If you follow the International Consensus Conference, you will put the probe on zone two or four, and you will see, if you have good eyes, you will see the liver because zone two and four are in the abdomen. Or if you are tired, you risk to see a lung consolidation. This is why we advise at SURF to follow the blue points. That is, we use only the zone one of their uh, consensus conference, and we put the probe at the standardized points, two anteriorly, one posteriorly. Just know the blue points are the points used in the blue protocol. Another misconception, for instance, is that there are 40 in the commentary of chest. Obesity is a hindrance. We don't fully agree. Here is the case. Respiratory failure. We see that to the left, there is no B line. You can see maybe Z lines. There are not B lines. No time to go on the description. This patient has no pulmonary edema. And we can see to the left and to the right that there is a lung sliding. In spite of a good amount of fatty tissue. So this fatty patient has the A profile in spite of all this. The BRU protocol is a transnational approach, which means that each time you think of using your stethoscope or asking x-ray or even considering transporting the patient to CAT scan, you can use lung ultrasound instead. And this is of value in something like 15 disciplines. So our we, time is up, uh, Daniel. Uh, in one minute. All right. OK, it's 25. So this patient has the B lines, numerous, anterior symmetrical, associating with lung sliding. This is, again, the B profile. We insist on this definition. This is likely hemodynamic pulmonary edema. And we have one more minute for answering to more questions. Thank you for your interest. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
maybe you have answered this, but we have a, a question regarding differentiation between cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Maybe you would like to reiterate again. The difference is mainly the B profile, which is the, the feature of the hemodynamic edema, which is opposed to four profiles that we see in pneumonia IRDS, that is inflammatory edemas, the B prime profile that I hope we have seen clearly in this short lecture, the C profile that is anterior lung consolidation, regardless number and volume, even consolidations of one millimeter are seen in pneumonia IRDS anteriorly, not in hemodynamic edema, and two other profiles that are called the AB profile, that is an asymmetry that some uh, doctors call uh, shared, uh, spared areas, and also a longer term, which is the AV PLAPS profile, and we have called all the eight profiles of uh, the blue protocol. That is uh, when the pneumonia is posterior, you can see it uh, after uh, diagnosing the A profile, looking that the veins have no thrombosis and you come back to the posterior lung. When you have what we call PLAPS, that is posterior consolidation or even pleural effusion, we can say this patient is likely with uh, numbers pneumonia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, uh, Shem. Uh, do you have any other questions to uh, Professor Dan uh, Daniel? No, no.